All right, cool. So, hey, first guest in the stench free zone, no bull logistics, media and entertainment. Uh, it, it's the it's the railroad sensei. It's Brian Schnedler, dude. I'm so happy to be on. <laughs> there he is, right there, brother. This guy has been. You've been so you've been in like railroad since like the steam engine was invented. Or something. <laughs> I feel like it. My body. <laughs> <laughs> obviously still in the in the damn news the 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 strike and not strike and it doesn't seem like anybody's learned a freaking thing since uh this all started uh a while ago um latest news dude i got my opinions on some headlines uh from some people uh but what's your thoughts on what's going on here brother man unfortunately i would have to say this that the the corporations won yesterday and the working class lost I mean, it, it basically comes down to that. I, I feel for a lot of the union members that held out on this. And unfortunately, you know, I kind of seen this kind of transpiring because they were pushing the envelope and I knew once Congress or anybody got involved, they weren't going to get what they wanted at that point. And unfortunately, yeah. that's what we witnessed yesterday. Did you, did you really? I mean, I, I thought they were going to, I mean, maybe I'm not paying attention, wasn't paying attention enough, but I mean, surely to God. I can't, I searched everywhere to figure out why one sick day. I get it operationally, what a pain in the ass it is to have somebody be able to just call off and have it. But I mean, okay, you're also operating at a 58 on average or 56 OR on average. I think you could figure out how to handle, you know, seven sick days for, uh, why, why is this such a big deal for the roadways, uh, for the railroads, the corporations to give up sick days? It seems like a basic human element that you would want to give to people just to make them happy. This doesn't, I, I'm not, I don't see, feel like Shea Rod, you know, Shea Rodriguez and, and the people's liberation and shit like that. It, it feels like this just like we're in the 1910, <laughs> 19, you know what I mean? Pretty close. I think 1926 was uh, one time that Congress had to get involved back then for, yeah, to, you know, adverted a uh, strike at that time. But the answer in short, Michael, is PSR. It's, it's, it stands for Precision Schedule Railroading. Um, now, it's an operational strategy, and it aims to minimize it, the ratio between the operating costs and the revenues and all that stuff, kind of like you mentioned. And, you know, and it does present a lot of various cost-cutting and ostensibly efficiently increasing measures, you know. But I think the problem is, is that... Um, all this has worked out to a part to where it's, it's over the past six years. You know, I remember when it was first introduced, I was running a, a sand fracking facility and we happened to be on one of the class one railroads and yeah, and they, and at this time we were only designed for unit trains, which were at least a hundred, 120 cars at a time that we were getting on one solid train. But they said, Hey, you know, it was kind of a monopolistic approach because they're like, there's, you're not going to do anything about it. We're, we're switching over to the shipping method where you're going to receive maybe 20 at a time, 30 at a time, just so they get there. Well, we weren't designed to hold that capacity as a yard. And so that became an issue for us immediately. And when that started coming down and we started seeing a lot of the layoff of the crew sizes and all that, that's when I kind of knew there was going to be some problems coming up. And then unfortunately we had COVID come through, so that didn't help matters. So now you're working with a reduced labor force and to not cut it. I mean, they can, they can totally afford to give these guys the raises and everything that they wanted. However, they're being penalized when they're saying, Hey, I got to take a sick day to recuperate from an illness. But the problem is they're wanting them to use vacation days. So how the yeah. hell are you going to be able to say, Hey, next week I'm going to be sick. So I need three or four days off. And they get, you know, it just, it doesn't make sense. Uh, called, called off day is you get, you, you, is you have to, it, uh, the way I understand it, you could, you call off, it sucks up your, your vacation days, but then there's like penalty points. And once you accrue so many penalty points, they like kick you in your ass or do something to you. I, I don't yeah. know. Okay. Knock, knock you with a taser or something stupid. I exactly. And, and you look at it and you nailed it on the head. I mean, at about 80% of the labor force in, in whatever, you know, today's numbers are, they have those six sick days available to them, those personal days. Yeah. And, and I don't, you know, and, and the problem is, is like these, these barons, basically, they're kind of like being railroad barons at this point saying, Hey, we don't, you know, we have to have this operating 24 seven, no matter the size. Yes. And it can be brutal. I mean, I remember, you know, back when we had a, an eight hour off period 
you know, we basically turn and burn. Uh, we'd be two, three hours away from our home yeah. depot. And by the time we got back and got home, I mean, really, we'd be there six, five hours, maybe at best. And we get a phone call saying, hey, come back to work, which was okay with me. I was on the extra board. So that just meant more money in my pocket. However, yeah. when we, we, we did the 10 hours off, two hour call time. I was barely making 40 hours a week as a relief crew guy. And that was pretty tough. And, yeah. and kind of going back to what I was saying about the, the customers, you know, the, a lot of shippers are on, you know, at, they're basically under the whim of these class ones because it is kind of a monopolistic approach. If they're on that line alone, they can't yeah. to take their business anywhere else. You know, they can't well, yeah, because yeah, one, one of the things that the Surface Transportation Board was trying to implement was uh, reciprocal switching, right? Which is, a, yeah. and I've looked at the log logistics of making one switch, and it just seems like a nightmare to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not like dropping and hooking a 53 foot or even a set of doubles on the, you know, at a, at a, at a, at a, at a you know, a lot on the side of the, on the side of the, uh, the uh, turnpike or something like that, man. I mean, yeah. reciprocal switching looks like a bitch, dude. <laughs> yeah, but and again, you know, and that's and that's why that's why these freight carriers won't give ground on paid leave. You know, yeah. they're they're already understaffed, they're already underperforming. Uh, you know, they can't allow these unanticipated absences to become significantly more prevalent in this whole thing. And so it's either you know pull back from the PSR or suffer more frequent. Well, but it, but here's the thing: the PSR seems. I, I don't know what it stands for. Does it stand for politics screwing railroaders now? Or what, what is you know it? What? I think that is exactly what that is now. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know. I don't know what PSR stands for. You know, I, I, the first time I, I, you know, I mean, it's been around for quite a while. It's like, oh, wow. Okay. Like they're, the service is going to be unbelievable and the efficiencies are going to be unbelievable and stuff like that. Not PSR sounds like a, just this wow. nice way of saying, hey, we're going to cut out as many expenses as possible, provide shitty service and ain't nothing you can do about it. Yeah, and you know, and that's the thing. It is, it's advertised. That, am I wrong? I mean, am I wrong? Change my mind. I don't know. And it's advertised as that to shippers and everybody like, hey, this can bring in so much efficiency, but that's just not the case. No. I mean, honestly, it's not. Like I said, we've seen it, the effects of it at my location at the point immediately. I mean, just within months. And it was such a cluster for us that we were like, hey, how do we work our way around this when we're not designed to take the cars in this way? Because it, it was it was difficult and challenging at times. And not only that, when we would get filled up in our yard, the overflow would start plugging up their yard. So they actually introduced an embargo on us at one time because we had too many rail cars, but we weren't able to offload the cars in a in a in that matter of time that window they gave us. Because you know when we're taking the sand in about that time. We had to fill them up in silos. Well, the silos were staying full because fracking had just kind of plummeted around then. Yeah. And then, like I said, COVID was on the on the brinks there of, of coming in the way it did, and it just really it really suffered, you know. So 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 sensei, sensei, sensei. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I I want you to, if if you will, give us the uh, distinct honor. Give us your opinion from both sides. First of all. You, your career goes from, you know, the bottom to the top or mid-level top in, in, in railroading, right? And what you're doing. So give us a brief, brief background of why you have a unique perspective from all levels in railroading and tell us what both sides are thinking right now. What, what's going down? Man, you know, I will say from both sides of, of the, of the, of the playing field here, I, I'm more biased with my union brethren out there who do that because they are the backbone of this nation, I believe. And I'm, I'm going to be mm -hmm. a little biased when I, when I make comments like that, because if you see something in your home, it came by train, you know, and I mean, from the cargo, I thought it was truck, dude. Well, it's, it's cargo, trip, train, truck. But the problem is, there a is fight? It, 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 there's 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 fight. we're all we're all brothers in arms, and that's what right. I'm saying. Do I need to bring in an arbitrator, and we'll agree oh, on intermodal? Oh, and we'll oh, agree oh. on intermodal. We'll just agree on intermodal, or what? Intermodal is a good one. How about that? All right, all right let's go. Okay. But again, you know, like I, I, I feel like you know those guys. I mean, we we are out there twenty four seven. I mean, I don't. I was just telling my daughter the other night. We had a uh, one time. In a snowstorm that came through, I had icicles hanging off my nose, you know, and I was like, man, you know, I made some sacrifices to make sure that it happened. But then again, on the management side, you know, you got stakeholders, you have investors, you know, those people are wanting their returns and their money too. And, and unfortunately, as 
like I said, being on both sides, you see that cut yeah. from the labor force. My heart tends to go to that side more because those people have families, those people have lives, you know, and that they, they need to continue to go. Yeah. It, yeah. it becomes a cold entity when a corporation does not have that feeling with it, you know, and it just, it just cut off. And I think back in my career, especially in the beginning, I was fortunate enough to be in a more family environmental uh, surrounding with that, you know, where mm -hmm. the, the management did care. They did have empathy. They did, they did understand like, Oh man, you know, Hey, you got a sick loved one. You need to stay home with them. I understand that's fine. You know, take a few days, but now, you know, with this being said, it just, it just cuts all that out. So I have a hard time adjusting in that type of environment. And I was, and yeah. I was mentioning that last night. I said, if I was in this environment now, as a laborer, I don't know if I would make it because I would, I would probably say something that would get me fired at that point. Yeah. 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 You'd speak up. Yeah. Yeah. I, That's been I, my I mean, think, on many, many, many occasions that has bitten me in ass. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I've heard two stories that really kind of stuck with me when this all kind of began when, uh, you know, they're implementing their attendance policies, you know, some mm -hmm. of the last ones were one guy was an older locomotive engineer. Um, he, he had kept putting off going to visit the doctor or whatever, because, you know, he didn't want to get penalized and died a week later from a heart attack. Ooh. Another guy, um, same thing. He was feeling like crap. And, and for weeks he waited until his days off aligned, went to go see a doctor, come to find out he has an infection, but now requires surgery. And it's, oh, if wow. you are a worker and you feel that intimidated to, to be able to voice, you know, concerns health wise. I mean, and that's where it should be. I mean, really, you need to look at your labor force and make sure health-wise, those guys are taken care of mentally, physically, you know, because we, we both Amen. Know. And be able to and be able to take care of their family. It's so important to be able to take care of your family, man. Exactly. And to me, I mean, that would, it, you would garner more support, you know, sure. from, from the outside of the industry type people. You know, they would understand. But it's, it's like I said, it's a weird thing when you get into – profits and, and all this stuff and, and, and it, it, that becomes a focus you know i mean they railroad is in the business of moving freight it's not about creating jobs however i think mm. you know you, if you pass on that type of environment or that that kind of culture basically in that environment you know you're gonna have some unhappy employees and no one's gonna oh yeah 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 so let me ask you this, how, how unhappy are we looking at right now? Um, you've got insights, you've got friends that are, that are there still, you got ties that are still there. I don't want you to give away any, any plans. Just let me say this, a, a reporter that I used to respect wrote that a, that the strike was thwarted. Now, if you know anything about English grammar, thwarted means that they foiled like some sinister evil plot to have a strike. And I took exception with that that uh, headline. Thwarted is not the right word for what happened. The their unions and the union brethren weren't and sisters were not running around waiting just can't wait to strike. <laughs> you know, you know, thwarted is the wrong word. They, so. and they did but, use that language, Michael. I will say that. They did, and it's ridiculous. They didn't and, and, and I think that's what gets a lot of the people in the nation on, on the corporation side. Sure it did. They, of course they, it they, did. They give this bad view on the workers just being big crybabies, like not getting what they want. But Yeah, here's however, the deal. And, 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 and we're going to, here's the thing, we're going to take away everybody's six day and entire nation. And then you think, is, you see if they thwarted something or what is going on. But here's a question, my brother, wildcats, not wildcats, exodus of workers. They looking to go somewhere else. They're, they're already having problems and the big corporate railroads are saying, hey, we can't recruit, recruit anybody anyways. And I think that's a bullshit statement that just supports PSR and their, their deal to, to do that. But are they creating that now by doing this? I mean, now they have less and less people. Is what what what's your thoughts there? Wildcat or no wildcat? People gonna walk away? Man, I, I feel on an individual level, maybe you know several will walk away from the some of the friends that I have that are still railroading and, and in the happen to be in a couple of those unions that you know did not sign up for the uh, the four out of those twelve. And they literally have expressed that they just want to quit. And, it, and it's sad because the love and the passion that I have for this, this industry, along with these guys as well, it, it, it's, you can see the pain in their eyes when they're saying it because it becomes such a, a part of your life. Your family's become yeah. lovers, you know what I mean? Like you just, you have such a Such a unique op uh, occupation and the trains, let's just face it. We're still still kids at heart. They're freaking cool, man. Yeah. Trains are freaking cool. And they're it fun really to play is. with. 
right? Yeah. It really is. I, I will tell you that. I never played with trains as a kid until my first day, and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a train fanatic. <laughs> yeah, I could do it now. Now I can play yeah. with these trains. These yeah. are awesome. Yeah, I could see that, man, how painful it is to walk away, but you and, see and, that. You know, another, another thing, too, that I feel like is, you know, the, the railroads really showed that they were not willing to do any more discussions with the, the laborers, you know. They did, and they, yeah. they, 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 they told the, their wild card, you know, was relying on Congress and Senate to say, Hey, we're not going to come to the table no more. And we'll just wait this out till you guys look bad. And then we'll have some backing from, you know, from government to here to come in and step in and, and not give you what you want. I mean, they, yeah. you know, what they did, did they get, up. did they get that signal in August back in August? Remember when the, the, the board, the, there was a so, that was, that said, Hey, give them the raise, but the rest of it is beyond our scope, which is a complete cop out. Cause it was entirely within their scope. They, they just can. didn't do it. Was that a signal to say, Hey, do this. And we agree with you on the other part of it, but we're not really going to say that. And just know that here's a little flag saying, Hey, sit tight. And we got your ass later. I think so. And like I said, um, you know, I, they, them relying on that to happen, they knew that was going to, that was going to fall back on. They just, they didn't have to, they didn't have to push it no more. And like I said, unfortunately, you know, these guys came out and, and wanted to, I mean, I, I don't get the whole sick day of leaves. They could have made an amendment to it really. I mean, really, I mean, that's all they had to do. And it, it could have been added into the one, but instead they introduced it as two separate things on the floor which both to, to allow it to pass with, with and let it fail at the same time, exactly. right? That's why they and, did. And both of them failed. They they both failed, and it's like, okay, so what was the point of that? I mean, it was it, 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 there it was a know. show. It was a show because most people don't think analytically like you do, and they they buy the headline and they buy they buy the show, and 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 it's complete bullshit. It was set up to fail yeah. from the very beginning. One for the money, two for the show, man. That's all it yeah. takes. It's all it. It's all it takes, brother. But it, it like is. management refused, you know, to give that ground on those on those leaves earlier this year, and that's when railroad workers started to strike, and that's when, like I said, all this attention came to it, and you know, they're again. I mean, they kept reiterating the message, like if if this was to happen, it's going to cost the nation anywhere between half a billion to two billion dollars a day, which yes, it's very detriment you know, to our economy as it is already in this, in this situation. But I mean, when you're, when you, you what, if there's a strike, you mean the, the, yeah, the impact? Was, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah no then, depending on what, you know, which one, you, what no doubt. analytics you look at, I mean, you're looking at a half a billion, 200 billion a day or $2 billion a day easily. And right. I mean, but again, you know, they, they look at the pay increases, you know, it wasn't so much about that or the back pay. It's really just about how do you, how do you structure your life around not being able to take days off? You know, if you can't take a personal day off, I mean, like, what if you have a mental issue, a mental health issue, and you need to reset? You know, hell, I need a day off just to get my head straight. You know, that could, and they, they preach that safety after all times about being mentally, you know, strong and sound all the time out there. So you can be aware of your environment and the dangers around you. Yes. So yes. If, you're, if you're already frustrated, man, accidents could happen like crazy out there. And that's what I feel is my concern. Is or tired, mental. Yeah, you're thinking about yeah. something else. You're, you're just drained physically yeah. and spiritually. You're going to you're gonna mess up somewhere, you know, and, and it's difficult to see because that's what I see happening right now. And again, like that coldness of just wanting to see profits is, is, is pulling these corporations back. Okay, now let me let me introduce this. I do not ride rides at carnivals and it's not because I'm scared of carnies. I'm scared of the attitude of a carny who's working. Right. And also the like two or three suspect wood blocks that are under <laughs> holding up, holding up. The yeah, it's a little sus. Right. But it's the, it's the attitude, right? So regardless of, Regardless of their spiritual, regardless of their spiritual health, their mental health, their physical health, and all that other kind of stuff, the fact that they know that this corporation is making all is is it is operating in the fifties as an OR and does not give a rat's ass about your personal life. Are you going to look twice at something that you think? Are you going to make that extra effort to just ensure things are just right or done perfectly? Hell no. No. Hell no. You're killing that attitude that, hey, I'm working for this company because I love this company. I believe in it. You've just destroyed all of that, right? Absolutely. And that's what I was talking about, that culture. I think that's a very important part, you know, for any company is to have that culture in place and, and stick with it. Because 
it, it's kind of the cliche saying that we've always said, you know, happy wife, happy life. It's the same thing in this concept. Yeah, absolutely. You got yeah, you, know, no. you got a, a workforce that is going to stand behind you and for what you stand up for as a company, you, you guarantee, you know, those guys are going to make sure everything happens to, to ensure success as, as a whole, you know, but unfortunately it works better in theory than practice. <laughs> Yeah, it certainly does. Hey, before we end this, this is 20 minutes. I wanted to be a quick, nice, quick, short, uh, you know, take on what is going on here. First guest in the no bull stench free uh, yeah. logistics news <laughs> zone. Uh, Brian, the sensei, Brian Schneather, the railroad sensei. You got anything to say? You got anything coming up? You got anything you want to tell people you're working on or anything like that? I mean, there's at least, uh, you know, you and I will see this again. So say something. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, again, I, I, I'm working on several other projects as far as uh, clean energy, sustainable, you know, projects, things like that. Um, Love still, it. Love you know, it. Still trying to get out there and, and pound the ground with uh, short line railroads as much as possible to advocate for them in, in any aspect that I can. Uh, we still, you know, staying busy with my freight broker, Jacasia Logistics. And, you know, our partners at LK Transport here in Kansas City. So, I mean, we're, we're kind of focused on that right now in the meantime. However, like I said, we uh, we do have some projects coming up in the first quarter of next year that you should see some more out of the out of the rail side of it, hopefully. So it cool. makes more it makes more impact on the news, man. So we'll get there. Awesome stuff, brother. Hey, I appreciate it. This is the No Bowl Stench Free Logistics News and Entertainment Zone. Brian Schneider, the Railroad Sensei. Check him out. Follow him. He's everywhere, man. Peace, man. <laughs> Peace and love. Thanks for being the first guest, brother. I really appreciate hey, thank it. Thank you, man. Have a great day. Hey.